Welcome to the MBS Show, episode number 149. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is James. Wow, hello. One time without making one of these. Holy cow. I know. How are you, man? Uh, I could be better, but I am getting better as I am streaming live right now. Doing a picture of Vinyl Scratch throwing lasers from her eyes. Wow. So, wait. I thought that mean was supposed to be in his mouth. No? Uh... Norman, why don't you introduce the next person and just, yeah, please, stop talking stupid. Stop okay, talking stupid. Okie dokie dokie. And also joining us is Ro. Hello, all you happy people. Hey Ro, how are you doing, man? Uh, after a whole family-sized pizza, it's very slowly, very slowly. Wait, you ate a whole family-sized pizza on your own? It was delicious. <laughs> and not invite us? What the hell? You're on the other side of the world. It doesn't matter. Oh, so you... Okay, fine. Next time I'll write you an invitation. Let's see how you get here. It's a thought that counts. Oh, meanie. But anywho, also joining us is Minus Gonzo. (laughs) Wow. Classy. Classy. (laughs) Right on cue. I'm finishing finishing off a takeout. Oh, my. Because we're all having takeouts tonight. (laughs) Making me hungry. I I had a very um. I actually had a really good lunch, but no, you're making me hungry again. Shut up. Uh, I didn't have that good of a lunch. I oh oof, no no. But anywho, Gonzo, how are you, man? Well, uh, it's been weird lately, um, on and off. Especially yesterday, a lot of people can verify that mm-hmm. I ended up getting a little sick. Oh god. And, uh, but I feel better now. Oh, that's good. So far. Anywho, let's see. I, I think I should ask you the two questions, Gonzo, because it's been a while since you were here. Favorite character? Miss Harshwini. <laughs> nice. Favorite episode? Well, there's been a lot of good episodes, but I'm still in favor of Party of One because I like to see Pinkie Pie to church. <laughs> uh, good one, good one, good one. So, anywho, thank you, Gonzo. Thank you for coming on. And, well, thank you for being here with us because we are going to dip real hard on this episode. What do you mean? Well, short episode, New Year's, there's no news that much, and I'm very derpy right now, as you can tell by my English. But anywho, uh, let's see. Ro, I think you have something to do. Good afternoon, evening, or morning, ladies and gentlemen. I am Romuald, and this is AMBS Show News Time. In today's news time, My Little Pony Art book to be released in fall 2015. Have you ever wanted to know how what goes into the making of My Little Pony episode? Ever wonder how many times a character had to be redesigned or just curious about the concept art for the show? If the all of these answers are yes, 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 then you are in luck. My Little Pony, the Art of Equestria art book published by Abrams Books will feature an amazing collection of the art, the writing, and design pieces. It will also give readers an understanding of how their favorite characters came to look and be as they are today. The book will have 192 pages with 200 illustrators and word count of 7,500. Except to see this book in fall 2015. I am Romeo Alt and this has been the MA Show News. Back to you, Norman. (laughs) Are you kidding? Is that the only piece of news that we have? Well, most of them are going to be true. Dude, this is major news. Well, yeah, Yeah, it's awesome that we... Uh, Can I ask a few questions about this book? Yay. Will you explain why... uh, Will you explain why... Uh, how should I say this? What was that last? What was the what was the season finale? Uh, uh, season Twilight, three finale title. Twilight, Twilight Kingdom. Oh, the season three finale. Uh, Wait, uh, no, no, no. If the season three finale is Magical Mystery Cure, uh-huh. mm-hmm. can somebody explain why Magical Mystery Cure? Why Magical Mystery? Mm. Oh, Terry, how? It, that... Why it was structured like that, and why it was only twenty-two minutes long instead of in a two-parter? Yeah, that. I and well, they can. I'm pretty sure they will touch upon it. They kind of already explain it in the Elements of Harmony book. I didn't see the Elements of Harmony book. I I I, I can't afford it right now. <laughs> uh, I I do I do have a copy. They basically explain that the second the 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 third season, uh, the season three finale episode. Ended up like that because they didn't have enough budget to make more episodes, so they had to cram it all together in a, in one single episode, uh, twenty two minutes, and it was a musical episode in order to bring out the 
uh, like quickly change the mood and the emotion of the scene uh, without having to spend too much time uh, on it. That's All the explanation right. that they gave. Yeah. Makes okay, sense. and the next question is, how come in later episodes, how come Fluttershy is always back to square one in her you know, personality? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm a, I'm sorry I'm a little bit... Uh, I'm sorry if I sound... Cynical. Uh, that's not a word. <laughs> I, think that's the, <clears throat> I think that's the running gag. I love Fluttershy to death, honestly. I love Fluttershy, but it's, it's, it feels like they've been keeping rewriting her as if... Um, when she was previously uh, have her have an episode of her own, um, it's like one episode she has a fear or um, some sort of a ang- social anxi- anxiety that uh, she has, and she overcomes it in the episode. But when she literally goes to another, when she literally has another episode centered around her, it's like that the previous episode never even happened. It's like she's back to square one. She's still being afraid of her own shadow. Uh, well, I guess those are not going to be answered there because the the book is clearly going to cover how they create. It's going to cover the creative process, how they go from a script to storyboard to animation to finally release the whole thing. Uh, it's going to be like uh, I'm not sure if you guys have those making of books. But it is literally be, uh, going to be like one of those making of books that start with like you well, know talking about the characters, then showing dude, dude, concept dude. art. Dude, we don't have making of books. We have making of feature reds that come as extras on a oh. DVD. No, no, no. I don't know. I mean, I'm going to show you something. Um, I, I must have it right here. I don't know. I mean, I can do it. You can only see this on the stream. Too so bad. This is going to be completely pointless for the podcast. Doesn't want to come out. Come on, you little bastard. <sighs> come on. We may have to. We may have to just we may have to just uh, take You're gonna have to edit. put it in the show notes. <laughs> You're gonna have to edit this. No, okay. Here be you in. go. I have I have many of these, but, but this is the one that I have handy m- more handy. Uh, let me just blow the uh, picture so you can see it bigger. Okay, there we go. I have this. This is the making of uh, books book of the mm. others that horror movie starring Nicole Kidman. It is a huge book. It's actually really good, and it has. Some beautiful... Pl- First of all, it has the entire script wow. of the movie. The whole screenplay. The, actually, the original screenplay before it got edited. And then it has, uh, it has some production design photographs showing you the making of the movie, how they designed the interiors, how they designed the, the costumes, like that. It has beautiful photographies with the characters and everything. And it shows you the entire creative process from... Uh, it has storyboards... And it shows you the entire production process from the the start of the movie to the end. And this uh, this book that they are going to be making for MLP, if it's anything like this one, I am totally buying it. I have like this one. I have the Jurassic Park one. I have a bunch of these making of books for a movie nerd and a, a, a fan of like knowing how things work behind the scenes. That that is a treat. I am really looking forward to this. I know what you mean, movie. James. I know what you mean because recently, when I was up at a con, uh, I went to a bookstore, and over there they sold the art book for Bayonetta, and oh my god, was it worth the cash? Oh cool! Oh Bayonetta! Yeah. Oh dear! Oh god, it was so good. <laughs> Thirty chapters dedicated just to her legs. Oh, no, I wish. No, chapter one is Bayonetta, the design and everything. You, funny. Chapter two, leg, uh, right leg. Chapter three, no, left no, leg. Funny enough, funny enough. Um, originally, Bayonetta was uh, when they designed her. It almost looks similar to Dante from Devil May Cry. Yeah, mm, that like, might get no, 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 no. It, it was original sketch, and as the process goes on, they change her looks, and well, to the Bayonetta we know now. And I am really interested in seeing how some characters in the MLP universe got changed. Because from what I understand here, it says the My Little Pony episodes. And I'm not 100% sure if it's talking about the Friendship with Magic series. So it could be from Generation 1 to 4. So that would be a real cool thing to see how things were done back then and now. I actually think that it includes all of the generations. Yeah, like from oh. Generation 1 to Generation 4. Well, okay, that would that would explain. Hopefully, it'll explain a few things, and hopefully, that'll explain. Well, <laughs> I don't. 
I can't. I don't think. <laughs> I can't. I can't. We'll, we'll get. I'm, I'm not. Okay. Her, I, I don't think we're going abandoning. to talk about. Gozo, gozo, gozo. Abandoning. Gozo, gozo. <laughs> I don't think we're, we're going to talk about. They're going to talk about the newborn yeah, cuties. Yeah. So do you know how to yeah, work? Yeah. <laughs> I don't. I cannot imagine them talking about that oh, with a straight oh face. God. But um, we may get we may get an explanation why they decided to go uh with uh, Pinkie Pie as an Earth Pony and Fluttershy as a Pegasus. Because if you remember, the original concept art that Lauren Faust was doing, uh, uh, Fluttershy was based on Posey, who mm-hmm. was an Earth Pony. And Pinkie Pie was based off Surprise, who was a Pegasus. And the original concept has Pinkie Pie as a Pegasus and Fluttershy as an Earth Pony. They decided to switch it around. And I, right now, I don't remember why. Hmm. Um, I don't know if it was executive meddling or what, but I have no idea why they decided to change it. Maybe it will go explain it. I mean, I am interested. I am interested. Maybe. Maybe. Like I said, I bought Bayonetta because I love Bayonetta. And I'm going to buy this pony book because, well, I love the pony books. And expected to see this book in fall of 2015. And I'm sure fall is not that long away, right? Right? It feels long. I don't know. I have only two seasons, wet and dry. I have I have to go through four in a year. <laughs> <laughs> you, you people... Uh, wait, you're in what? Uh, the Southeast Asia. Mm-hmm. You people have wet and dry. Here in the yeah. United States, especially where I live, we have four seasons. Hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. When did we start talking about the weather and stop talking about I know, the news? I know. Right? I know. It's just. It's just. It's just. It feels long because you ended up because where I live, the New Year starts and it's middle of winter. Then comes March, April, and it's spring. It's normal, and sometimes you get a little bit of showers and storms. And you get summer during June, July, August. And it's very humid to the point to where uh, if it starts going triple digits, you're cursing at whatever god you are worshipping. <laughs> and, and then comes fall, which means which, – which, which goes around uh, a little bit of September, October, November. And that means – Kids will be running around with their – like chickens cut off with their heads, going to school, dealing with uh, Thanksgiving, dealing with uh, certain uh, holidays that happens during the fall. And then you go right back into December and it's winter Wait, where, it's, is, dro- where it drops to – where it drops to below freezing temperatures. And then again – and then and again, you're cruising at whatever god you're worshipping <laughs> worshiping right now for the cold. <laughs> But wait, wait, wait. So you're saying fall is near the October then, like in near the Halloween and the... Well, yeah. Um, huh, okay. So it's still a long way to go then. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They did mention something about that book involving a bit of in uh, a bit info of season five. So that's going to be cool. Well, I guess that by the time the book comes out, season five will be almost ending, so... Mm. I can't wait. I, I am especially interested in seeing the design or the concept design for sceneries you know what i mean like what you saw in your book just now james production design you say yeah 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 like uh, how they design the sugar or... cube corner and the everfree forest and all those yeah yeah and and finally we get to see the full diagram of how twilight library look like wait what probably well, because like... yeah you mean because... the new you mean the new one or the one that blew into pieces because tyrek is that's not a word <laughs> Don't let her, baby. <laughs> yeah, that one. Yeah, the, the the old one. I I can't wait to see how it was like before, because um, if you guys have been playing LOE, uh, they got well a rough sketch of how everything looks like. But I I want to see how it's officially looked like because there's a basement. So how? I'm wondering how uh, it looks so moderate outside. Yet it looks big on the inside, like it's a literal tree version of a TARDIS from Doctor Who. It's a TARDIS. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder how that's possible. Bigger in the uh, inside. It's just cartoon logic. Probably. Cartoon logic. Well, yeah, I, I guess everything is explained with cartoon logic in this cartoon. Oh, shoot. I think we just got... I think we're onto something, guys. <laughs> what is it? What is it? It's that it's a cartoon. It doesn't have to make sense. <gasps> dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. No, everything must make sense. Yeah. Yeah. To Remember the cannon. 90s cartoons? They had absolutely no freaking sense. <laughs> Why are they supposed to make sense now? They're all, 
Girl Remember the wild she... E. Coyote and Roadrunner cartoon? The coyote rode a freaking rocket. Yeah. And does he that does... make sense to you? <laughs> and he and he's always surviving those high, high uh, falls. And... Exactly. How you going to say that? Is life insurance is that badass? <laughs> uh, probably. Dude, cartoons are meant... You know what really grinds my gears? When oh, we Lord. take a cartoon and we try to make sense of it. What is wrong with us? Can't we just you know, sit and enjoy cartoons like we did like 10, 15 years ago? You know, when we were in pajamas and eating cereal for breakfast? <laughs> this brings up an interesting topic or interesting um, yeah, thing that I want to see. Yeah, we're going to we'll talk about it later. Let's no, focus on the, the main the, thing. Yeah, but seriously, um, this, um, this, sorry, no, uh, this brings up something that I really want to see, like, the making of book for Looney Tunes because think about it like how would that look like before that would be so cool just to see the concept art the sell for the shows and whatnot and just the process of making a Wonder Brothers or Looney Tune cartoon you know how would something, that look? something tells me that one of these days um, going back to my little pony one of these days they are going to end up releasing the show on DVD or Blu-ray, and it's going to come with a ton of extras, oh. and it's going to explain the creative process behind all of these in a visual, uh, in a in a visual manner uh, that you can like, you know, watch how it goes from just being a tiny seed into this uh, phenomena that is it, it reached the space. Um, yeah. Guys, I'm not sure about you, but I don't think Star Wars managed to get into space that fast. <laughs> Like I think, I think the closest Star Wars got to space. Uh, I don't, I don't know, but now, yeah, like, okay, have we reported on Princess Celestia being etched onto the side or onto a, a circuit board on top yep. of the ISS right now? Yep, yep, that was last week's news. I love the comment that someone made on 4chan, guys. This joke has got out of hands. <laughs> This joke Deep. got out of hands. <laughs> and now there's a... Bu- uh, I like how, so- how some of these 4chaners were, like, seriously. Because Celestia and Luna, two characters of a show that 4chan first started making jokes about and starting, like, false uh, fan posts, that show ended up getting a massive, legit following and <laughs> seriously have... With its fandom, accomplished a lot more than all the other fandoms have. 4chan is now looking at this and like, what have we done? <laughs> and are now probably like contemplating about how the they're, they're not contemplating about how in the world they're going to go up and tear apart the entire freaking ISIS, um, ISS just so they can find that circuit board and remove it. <laughs> Go, no, bronies, no. You are scum. You don't deserve to be up in the international space station. Wow, that's extreme. That that happens. That happens. People uh, got so mad because ah, we have left a step on one of the biggest achievements in humanity, and it, it is it is it is really funny. But it happened. We cannot go back now. You don't see you don't see this kind of stuff happening in a lot of other fandoms. Some people will, will some of the fandoms will, and, the, and I'm not trying to be like bashful and saying ours is the best. I know that some of the other fandoms will try their best to you know try to make a difference, but uh, some of them can only do so much because, um, well, sadly there are uh, many like ours are of have a little bit of ill reputations behind them, and you know oh, why. Yeah. But, oh yeah, that's normal. Sometimes but ours you cannot is, do anything about it. Yeah, ours is despite all despite all of the you know the bad and ill bad and ill reputations. Ours seems to be not only despite all the despite all that we can still accomplish a whole lot, and it shows, and it will be able to show. I mean, seriously. Do you see the Sonic fandom having like Sonic the Hedgehog up on a, a circuit board and have on a no, circuit board? No, but I see them having a terrible. I, I see them having a terrible BD fan. Uh, oh god! No, <laughs> I, can't, no, no, no. I can't. I can't. Talk, I can't talk about Sonic Boom for like a long time. But let's not. Are you talk talking about? about that. Are you talking about the show? Or are you talking about the game? The game. Of I'm course. talking about both. But the, the f- show's not bad. The show's yeah, the show's funny. okay. You and I uh, love it. Don't remind me though. Don't remind me about Sonic Boom though. Uh, because 
I really, do, I really heard some negative stuff about. Are you talking this. about Christian? Oh. That's not a word. <laughs> oh Chris no, 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 no! Let's not talk about. Let's not talk about that. Dude, let's not talk about that. Do not remind me for the love of God. Uh, dude. Moving on swiftly. The next, the next news, next Norman. Part, next part. Yes. Uh, please, yes. please. So, anywho, um, I am ex- back on topic. <laughs> I am, About time. <laughs> I am excited for the book. Uh, I am excited for the book. And, well, I'm sure James here is also excited for it, too. Because he, okay. well, he's, what, a big fan of um, those kind of books? Yes? I have that one. I have the Pacific Rim one. I have oh, man. Jurassic Park one. I have the, like I showed, the one of the others, the one uh, for CSI. Uh, CSI Las Vegas. Uh, I have an ent- the entire collection of Guillermo del Toro, um, uh, like concept designs and everything, and I love those kind of books because they give you so much than just the DVDs. Uh, because yeah, one thing is like when the DVD when a DVD comes with all those pictures and like concept designs and all that from movies, it's like oh, this is so cool, this is so fine. Too bad it's trapped inside a DVD in my television set. Oh. I wish I could have this on 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 my hands. With the with, with the book, you can have those pictures on your hands, and it feels great. Oh, well, yeah. yeah. I mean, not everything is, can be improved with technology. You can try to be better, but nothing beats like uh, having a good old fashioned book between your hands. True that. I was true that. I, I I was watching Book of Eli yesterday uh, because I have to review it with movies late, so I was rewatching that movie, and I remember that one time that Bill Gates was talking about the future. And he said, but the, by the year 2010, people are never, are not going to use paper anymore. And they are going, they, we are going to substitute books with electronic books and people are not going to, and uh, we will not need to use paper ever again, meaning we are going to save a lot of trees. Mm-hmm. And I'm looking now, 2015, people still have books. People still use books. People are going to use books for the longest because books don't need batteries they will not shut down if there is a power cut you don't need to uh, replace or recharge it to keep wa- to keep reading it it is and best of all you are not going to be told every now and then can you please rate our app in the app store <laughs> <laughs> so it's it, uh, books are always going to have an upper hand over um, electronic books always so they are they not going to get extinct true 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 so, anywho, Rom, could you please read that link in the, sh- in the Skype chat? Wait, yes, I'm link. looking at it right now. Daniel Ingram teasing Pinkie Pie mystery song? What are Pinkie Pie's favorite things? Daniel Ingram just go. posted a tweet on his Twitter. I have a challenge to all MLP fans out there. What are all Pinkie Pie's favorite things in the world? Hashtag mystery song. I would say what they all are, but they're all not safe for work. I'm sorry. Oh, God, no. <laughs> this is a PG show. At least we're trying to keep it PG. Snapbacks. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. Unless, unless Daniel is planning on ripping off that one um, Supreme song. Um, uh, it started. Da, 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 These are a few of my favorite things. Oh, that. Unless he, unless he's going to try to rip it off and make it ponyfied. <laughs> hmm, that, that could be, be fun though. Because that could remember, be work. Remember that a remember that a good chunk of um a, a good chunk of the songs in MLP are directly inspired by other songs. Like I think it was like uh, stitching it together or like the art of the dress was actually based on another uh, another song. I didn't know. Yeah, it was. So yeah, I'm pretty sure that uh, I'm pretty sure that one is uh, is possibly going to be part of the inspiration. Yes, probably. Cool. Hopefully, it'll be, I hope. Hopefully, it'll make for an interesting mashup because <laughs> I love taking things. To, I love taking, stitching things together, and sadly, some of them oddly work for some weird reason. Because seriously, um, you guys know, or you guys, you guys remember uh, the Battle of the Band song from Rainbow Rocks. Yeah, I somehow made it even more creepier, adding Marilyn Manson's "Sweet Dreams." Oh God! <laughs> oh dear! I talk about a, talk about crazy. Uh, it's, it's just me though. But yeah, it would be interesting to see something like that, some sort of inspiration from something like a classic song, like from The Supremes, ended up going into a Pinky Pie song. Even though I'm not very thrilled about Pinky, but. <laughs> That's a story. <laughs> well, 
Um, it'll be really interesting if they did work it that way. So who knows? <laughs> it could be something. It could no, be worth something. Yeah, yeah, but, it can. And coming Pink- from Daniel Ingram, I I hope it's worth hearing. True that. True that. But Pinky's favorite things. Those that that is. Mm, those is so many. Like, what could it be? Maybe it's a trick so, question. It doesn't take a whole freaking episode. Get a trick question. <laughs> oh, you. Mm. Can I choke him? <laughs> Please do. No, oh, wrong. Okay. <laughs> Come here, you. Wow. wow. You, James, you should have listened to this guy last week. He was out punning Lycan. Really? Wait. Yes. Wow. Yes. <sighs> it was something out of this wow. world. <laughs> li- 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 Lycan is one of our buddies from Team OK, and he is a fantastic Australian. <laughs> Indeed. Well, anywho, uh, I I got no idea what Daniel Ingram is going to work with, but hey, who knows? Um, he every time when he does a song, it's going to be gold. So yeah, I can't wait. I can't wait. But so anywho, what yeah, fine now. So here is where the interactive part happens. We need you, audience, in James's stream, to ask us a question. It could be about anything. It could. But be as long as it's PG friendly. True that. I mean, if you want to ask James about movies he watched, you can ask him. If you want. to to ask me about my magic addiction, you can also ask that too. Gonzo with his oh, voice acting career, you, man. Unique, uh, unique perspective on things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and bro with his drawings, you can ask us. So <laughs> let the Q and A begin. Indeed. First question: Do we like mm, bananas? You know what? I actually really do because it's been discovered recently that bananas have more calcium than a glass of milk. Really? So I it was yes. potassium. No, no, no. They have, uh, yeah. Not only they have potassium, but they have a lot of calcium as well. So yeah, I do like mm, bananas. I like bananas to a degree, just not banana flavored things. Oh yeah. You know, like banana flavored pudding mm. and stuff like that. It's just. I don't even know why they try to replicate the taste of a banana. I know what it tastes. I know what a banana tastes like, and what they try to replicate in like pudding or cookies or uh, cakes—that's not a banana. That's almost vomit-inducing. Mm. Well, personally, for me, in um, in Asia, in Southeast Asia, we like to do this one thing where we take a banana and dip it in batter, and we deep fry it. Once we do that, we take it out, we um, de-oil it and whatever it is, and we eat it like that. And it's really good. Deep fried banana. Yeah, it's really good, man. Yo, it's, oh, is, that, you, is, is that called Goren Pisang, according to Talibani? Yeah, 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 yeah. How do you yeah, know? That's because uh, Talibani was saying it before, her mom is Malaysian. Oh, that's cool. Yep. Oh. Uh, you didn't say anything about bananas, Rom. I am not is the the question that Pedro has up there. Don't worry. I'm not. I'm, I I'm not am always that. bananas, but I'm not stuffed with pizza. <laughs> Does that answer your question? Uh, <laughs> Could someone kill this guy? Kill me? Why? I'm just not gonna even deal with that. <laughs> we don't have like, and someone has to take his part. <laughs> Besides, Ooh. I'm volunteering for this. I'm not charging you extra. <laughs> Ooh, Steel Place Smitty has something. Yes. Okay. yes. I remember Gonzo did live readings. I was wondering what process he goes through to choose them, or if he accepts requests and rules against rules regarding limits. Um, the live readings that happens when um me and the Inverted Shadow and some of his friends get together, uh, and just uh, live stream him reading a fanfic. Actually, there isn't really too much of a process. It's just uh, basically if. The Inverted Shadow finds a fanfic that he likes to have read on my live stream. He comes to me. Um, he's, he keeps it a total surprise for me until, like, when we're streaming. Because otherwise I probably, like, totally reject. Because <laughs> <laughs> several, several of the instances was Pinkie Pie fanfics that made me totally hate Pinkie Pie. Um, but anyways, he basically uh. comes up to me. He asks, hey, can you... Is, will there be a any sort of free uh, live stream to where I can come on and read it? And I would be like, uh, sure, let me find a time. We arrange it. And then uh, we we basically get just set up the live stream and then we read it. And I have a work, I'll have i have it recorded uh, with, with a Procaster and upload it onto YouTube. 
there isn't really we do there it's basically what he finds interesting unless somebody brought us a fanfic that we ended up actually liking and we thought about reading some people try to send us uh, requests about things and some of them we have to turn down because yeah there, it could be it could be numerous reasons it's either too long and it'll probably take a little while like some of the fanfics that are still um, in progress not completed because mm. Either it's long, or um, the VAs that we want to read along with have busy lives, or it could be that it'll pertain to something that neither of us will know about. Uh, because sadly, some people are trying to send me crossover fanfics with stuff that I don't even know of, and so, it will be totally confusing. Okay, Gonzo, um, yeah, I, I got a question related to that. So, when you say you guys read it, like, do you read it on the spot, or do you pre-read it first and then um, he, do it? He would probably take a look at it beforehand. I will have no clue until it actually happens, and I'll be reading along with him on the spot. Oh wow! He okay. he would probably take a look at it first, and then and then just ask me. Hmm. Right, Otherwise, cool. it's totally on him. I'm just I merely I merely host the stuff. He might have a he might have a stream. He it probably doesn't come get many many views, but basically some of it will be a total surprise. A uh, question from Mythos: Why uh, favorite multiplayer game? Ooh, um, I guess that's that a is a question one. for for all of us. I'm gonna yeah. go ahead and say it: Portal Two. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's Portal multi- Two. Oh yeah, multiplayer, right? Portal right. Two, because it's not just multiplayer. I think it's the absolute best co-op game ever made, <laughs> and yep. it's a it's a video game where. It could be either the best experience of your life or the absolute worst. <laughs> Thankfully, I got my I, I got my my best friend uh, to play with me, uh-huh. and we played through the entire campaign. It took us like ten hours, but they were fantastic, and it was oh, awesome yeah. to combine both your brains and like solve the puzzles <laughs> together. It was a fantastic interaction. Great game. Mm-hmm. And uh, for me, okay, I I would have to agree with James. Portal Two was one of those fun games. I I remember playing that game for my charity live stream uh, two years ago with Lionheart Cartoon, and oh my god, it was so much fun. But uh, as for now, I think one of those fun multiplayer games for me this would be a strange one because it's not really meant to be played that way, but somehow I jerry rigged it to um, make it fun for me, and that's. Uh, Dark Souls 2. Oh god, that game. <laughs> I know. So what we what me and Corner did was we got into a Skype call. We said, "Okay, I'm going to put my summon sigil here. Okay, when you see it, summon me." And he saw it. "Okay, summon. Now, let's go kill monsters. Yay!" Why <laughs> uh, so much fun? Why so much uh, fun? Um I'm not sure about my favorite multiplayer game. I I normally go on to TF2 a lot, but I've also have been da- uh, dotting around with um, Gary's Mod because, well, Gary's Mod has a lot of uh, fluidity in that, um, well, since it's a sandbox server game, you can create a lot of game modes out of it and you can do a lot of with it. Um, hmm. So, yeah, it's kind of difficult for me, so. Okay. Hey, um, Gons, I was wondering, do you still play Toho? I, I've dove into Toho, but I haven't played the game with myself because <laughs> I've seen the gameplay. I doubt if I'm going to last. <laughs> I would probably have a nervous breakdown before even the first stage complete, uh, completes, before even the first boss <laughs> even. Uh, I, I've, I, <laughs> oh, I've seen the playthroughs, dude. <laughs> but the music... About- the, the yeah. music is a fun. The music is a fun. I know. The music is fun, but it's bullet hell you're forgetting. <laughs> yes. You think about, you know, the side-scrolling uh, old-fashioned arcades, you mm-hmm. know. Some of the side-scrolling games where a lot of enemies will be firing at you. Oh, I'm trying to remember that one. I'm trying to remember that one that starts with a G. Uh, Galiga? That's probably it. That's you think so of that. the... Yeah. You think it, you think of science scrolling games like Galaga? Those are pretty easy compared to Toho. Toho, it's like whatever god you have, <laughs> it's for, whatever god you have, whatever god you're worshiping, he has he or she has forsaken you because there's going to be lollies shooting at you with balls 
and beat laser beams and who knows what. Good for you. Gonzo, you don't have to worry about it because Taliban is sending you some uh, <laughs> some encouragement in the chat. Uh, she says, you say that, but you will be fine. Look at the whole normal. It's really quite manageable. Uh, and also, I, probably uh, I probably will have to think about it, though, because somebody gave me um, Embodiment of Scarlet Devil, oh. and I will check that out once I get off my ass and uh, finally put that in. All right, all right. So, Ro, what about you? What yeah, you can say yours, Rome, Romy. Because I didn't want to interfere with your lecture on what video games you play. <laughs> In your spare time. <laughs> oh, that's nice I'm of sorry. you. <laughs> so yeah, the only multiplayer I game I'm ever playing is because TF2 because the community is pretty decent, unlike other MMOs and other multiplayer games I've ever been on. Not talking mm. about World of Tanks because gosh <laughs> darn it, people <laughs> get your act together. <laughs> but yeah, I I do don't I, I don't do no, play. I normally don't go multiplayer. Only TF2. That's the only multiplayer game I, I'm ever playing. Yeah, I do I know say, people. W- Oh gosh! Tanks. and I do know people who play with TF2. And yeah, honestly, if you're talking about games in general, like not video games, um, Magic the Gathering—that's a fun game to play with. Yeah, oh, but God. moving on to the questions, but, let's not yeah, forget yeah, the audience. Next question yeah, from Telly get... Bunny: How did we get yes. into art? Oh, um, that's a good question. Jinx, I was born on with a crayons in my hands on a stack of paper. <laughs> really? No. It's a metaphor, of course. It wasn't. <laughs> okay, what about you, Ben Jinx? Uh, I wasn't done with mine yet. yet. You want to leave me for the end? All right. Yeah, so... leave for because James has a bigger history than me. <laughs> okay. So basically, okay. I was nature by artist since like the beginning, since the dawn of my times. I remember I was drawing, drawing, and drawing. That's all I ever did, day in and night out. Mm-hmm. In school, I, my notebooks they would be sketchbooks. In math, literature, wherever you'll always see pictures. Always. All right. I kind of ticked off a lot of teachers about that, but that was still cool because those were awesome drawings, as they said. Yeah. Uh, so, Gons, what about you, man? I started make I started doing dub work and movies uh, since college because mm-hmm. I've tried drawing, I've tried making art art with my hands, and I'm not really coordinated. Much to say, I mean, uh, my drawings look. Well, my drawings would look like a kindergartner's, even though I would be in high school. <laughs> and uh, I tried, I tried sculpturing stuff, and they always turned out strange. In fact, um, the way I, some of the some of the stuff that I tried to do, like arts and crafts or whatever, I sometimes would get myself injured. I mean, I, I've got, I mean, the worst I've got was um, I was doing. Uh, I was doing a piece of art that would require me to scrape away some stuff with a scalpel, and I literally cut myself, um, and it literally was bleeding to the point to, to where at least I know it. I do. I was. I was like, um, I'm not going to let the teacher know, but unfortunately, the teacher did know because I was basically at the sink for a while, uh, keeping pressure on my wound, and, was, and my teacher was like, "My God, Gonzo, you." <laughs> you're going to the nurse's office. You're going to you're going to think about what you did. So that's what you got in the art: bleeding. That's nice to know. That's what, talk about you have to put bleeding for your art. Blood, sweat, and tears go into some pictures. Well, then again, yes, when you're out of but, red paint and you want to do art. Well, yeah, but then again, it wasn't really suitable for me. When I got into college, I I liked some of the comics that I like. I was like, well, I can't draw any, so I might as well just add silly voices and clips and uh, music behind them. And I was like, well, since I, well, since I got my own computer when I was also in college, I might as well do that. And uh, ever since then, um, ever since when I also when I also uh, got into anime, what I started doing comic dubs of you know web comics, age appropriate and YouTube appropriate doujins. And um, fan comics and all that. That's how I started making videos and doing uh, dub work, especially pertaining to My Little Pony. Mm-hmm. The difference now is is that, uh, yeah, ponies. <laughs> ponies. Cool, cool. Ponies. Well, for me, well, okay. Here's the thing. Um, early in my career, I was an illustrator artist. Um, back in two thousand and I forgot what year was it, but two thousand something. Uh, I had a long span of I didn't have any internets because new home 
telephone line was not there, so um, I didn't have internet. So all we had was cable. So I, I watched the Disney Channel a lot. And oh my god, I can't believe I'm going to share this story. But anyway, um, I, I saw this one show on the Disney Channel called Kim Possible. I look at That's it. I yeah, it was a good show. <coughs> yeah, Kim Possible. I, really I, I, I look at it, I, I watched it, and then like, oh, wow, I, I enjoy this. So I went to a cyber cafe of all places and searched for art. I look here, I look there, and oh, I, I saw this one website called DeviantArt. <laughs> so anywho, look on to DeviantArt and like, wow, I like this picture. Right-click, save, right-click, save. And then I, I collected a lot of pictures, and then I thought to myself, you know, I, I would like to contribute back to the community because there's a lot of great artists there who posted art. And you know what? I'm going to do my art and post it on the internet. Yay! At the same time, I was learning Illustrator on the computers and whatnot. So doing that, I learned a bit and I drew and drew and drew and drew. And well, it was fun. It was interesting. And... Till I met ponies, <laughs> and from that point on, things changed a bit. <clears throat> um, I was interested in doing a podcast for the longest time, um, gaming related back then, but somehow it didn't click because I couldn't find friends, I couldn't find people to talk to, and the brony community back then or early on was really open and was really fun to talk with. I, I felt a connection with them. So I started off doing the show with a few friends and, well, thing, uh, time change, friends come and go. And right now we got the current lineup. We got James and Rom. Hello. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, doing the, if this is considered art, I am enjoying it a lot. Art comes in many shapes and forms and well, podcasting is just one of them. It does. It does mm -hmm. come mm -hmm. in many different shapes and forms. And I like and to know that it's the Browning community. One is not less brought... valid than the other. I'm going to tell you my life story at this point. Um, okay. My entire family is a family of artists. Uh, all of them. My mom, my, uh, her father, uh, her father, father. <coughs> a lot of people uh, in my family, they love artwork. Uh, and they love doing uh, artistic stuff. And as it turns out, I ended up developing the artistic side of the family. So I decided to exercise it. Um... I have always been like, uh, you know, drawing every every now and then, this and that. But it wasn't up until uh, I stepped into a, a website called BCL, or Big Sun Control Library, that I said, hey, look at this, furries. I'm going to start drawing furries. Yeah, this is this is going to be fun. This is going to be great. And uh, why is the community in Fur Infinity such a... Uh, like they are like the cantina in Star Wars. It's like you'll never find a hall so full of scum and villainy as this one. It's like that's that's that was my first um, uh, hit with the the furry community. But one thing that it had was it had a lot of creativity. It had a lot of imagination thrown into it, and I really enjoyed it. So I stayed there for like uh, how much was it? Ten years, something like that, up until I uh, crashed into MLP, and up until that point. I was drawing every now and then, not that often, and I wouldn't care too much to uh, e improve my art style. But it was when I stepped into the Brony community that I said, you know what, maybe it's time for me to start getting better. And that's where I am right now. I thought it was going to be, I thought it was going to be, um, it was going to take me longer to explain myself, but no, it actually take shorter. Well, there was a really inspiring story, much better than mine. <laughs> Ah, shut up, Norman. <laughs> but yeah, your story uh, was really good. Nah, it was it was lame. But yeah, uh, that's how we became. You're lame. Artists. Your story wasn't. Oh, maybe I can continue with mine. Oh yeah, sure. We forgot about yeah. Rome. Wait, didn't you? <laughs> okay, go on. You've interrupting me halfway through. <laughs> I'm sorry. You took a long time. You better be. <laughs> so anyway, I was born and raised, and I was always been artistic. I was been drawing day and night, and now yeah. Every day. That was the only thing I love doing. And people enjoyed what I was doing. Back in school, in kindergarten, my pictures was like the talk of town, so to speak. And by the end of the school years, I was thinking of doing art professionally. But then there's these guys. who start telling me stories about how there's rivalry among artists. 
how's there's like despair, and etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And I'm like the last idiot on there. Believe them. So that sent me on a three years cruise around the world, seeking an alternative path in life. So for three years, I've changed so many trades. I've been a blacksmith, electrician, tailor, charity worker, sales agent, cashier, car wash attendant, dear God. Oh, the places I've been, the people I've met. It wasn't that bad. It was just somewhat educational. And then I got, in the last third year, I got to the point where I was like, what am I doing with my life? I don't know what to do. This is not me, but I gotta make a living. And then one beautiful day, an old friend of mine, we played Minecraft together, was watching a live stream. It was like, I was, I asked him, what are you doing? Like, I'm watching a live stream. Really? What kind of live stream? Oh, this one guy doing art. Okay. Link me, please. And then there was James. Oh. Drawing and really? having the time. Yes, I already told you that story, didn't I? <laughs> no. And this there I see me. you. And there I see you drawing bonies and having the time of your life. And then I asked myself, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. This is what brings me joy. Why am I doing it? All right. I listen to those idiots. And how would they know how what an art world works like? They're not artists. They're just... I can't even find the word what those guys are. Not <laughs> artists, that's for sure. Well, so, yo, I did the name. I, before you go any further, I have to say I'm sorry for ruining your life. <laughs> Ruining? Um, dude, you brought me back to life. I'm back from the dead. Great. So anyway, I quit my job. I gathered what I had left, got a tablet, and went back to business. And now I'm having the time of my life. For already over 10 months, I'm drawing, taking commissions. Uh, still barely floating, but I'm making progress. More and more people know me and want to hire me. It's, and I am having the time of life. I'm drawing. I'm improving. I'm making rainbows fly. I'm making the things I've never did before. Well, congratulations, Ron. Yay. Now, that was an inspiration story. Yeah. yeah. Not like mine. <laughs> or mine. The things I've learned is that, one, you don't listen to anyone. Okay. That's t two, you never fear. If you feel like doing it, do it. You make a mistake, okay, you did it. You did a mistake. Learn from it. Don't do it again. Do something else crazy. <laughs> all right, all right. So, uh, we got another question from Telebunny. And... Is it she, right, James? Yeah, Taliban right. is a lady. All right, Do you she... guys want to go pro or just keep doing art as a hobby? Well, I'm going pro because I got bills knocking down my door every month. <laughs> I'm not so sure about mine, really. Um, I'm not sure about if I should really go pro or not. But um, it would be nice to keep doing this as a hobby. Um, just because, well, I'd be happy just doing it because I like doing it, not because I'm being paid to. As for me, uh, I would like to go pro because I'm using the podcast as a platform to improve my English. Not working. And also to, well, have my experience in editing and radio and whatnot. And, you know, um, I'm a freelance photographer in real life. So doing this and doing my real job, it's kind of a difference in both worlds. But it's both... Are, both are fun where if I take pictures I edit them a bit and just post them online and whatnot. if I do a podcast it takes a lot more work where I need to bleep people out or leave this segment in or pull this segment out because well certain things are derpy in some ways like a few minutes ago where we were doing basically nothing and talking about Spongebob I don't think that would be in here but anyway please not don't don't <laughs> That's but, not. Any, but anywho, um, I would like to go pro, but this is a stepping stone to reach to that goal. James? I, I definitely want to go pro. I am absolutely doing my best to uh, to go professional from every uh, in every single aspect that... Uh, involves doing artwork from the creative process to the dealing with uh, clients and presenting myself to other companies i want to work as a not not as a freelance artist anymore i want to go completely professional because this as uh, this is very this is imbo this involves a lot of sacrifices uh, most important of all saying goodbye to your social life i i'm completely that serious on that like when you start drawing you have to keep drawing. You have to keep going. You cannot stop. You have to 
continue because if you stop, then you are pretty much stoned for because they, there is always an improvement around the corner or there can be other people looking at your art saying, hey, maybe he's available, maybe we should talk him about it. And you cannot lose all those opportunities. So, yeah, going professional involves a lot of sacrifice and it involves a lot of uh, hard work. And that's what I am putting on right now. And yeah, I definitely want to go pro. I want to do this for a living. Hell, I'm pretty much already doing this for a living. So going pro on this, yes. Yes, this this is stopped. This, I enjoy doing this, but this stopped being a hobby three years ago. Hmm. So yeah. a question for you, are drawing pen and paper artists out there, like uh, you and Ro here. Would you like to work for a company? Mm, yes. No. Personally, I, I would. <coughs> I, I totally would. I would. I would like to work for a company, yes. And I will tell you why. Because working for a company is an umbrella. Mm, true that, true that. You get they the... can protect you. You have, you have, uh, you have <laughs> your contract. You can get a good contract if you can uh, land a good deal with a good company. And they protect you. They cover you. They give you a, a paycheck every month so you have that safety. The only problem will be that you have to deliver the product on time or else you get fired. But if you are a responsible person who knows when to deliver and knows what to deliver and has a lot of... Uh, and you're, if you're a very secure guy, you don't have anything to worry about. The only problem might be that you can end up landing with a ba- uh, ending with a bad company because those exist and mm-hmm. those very frequent happen and that they might pay you very late or they might not pay you at all. But then oh, again, no. that's why you have the contract. And that's why you can shield yourself in that contract. And having that allows you to, like, if they are breaching it, you can sue. Mm, true. But would so, you yeah. think that your creativity would be stifled because what they expect from you or what they people, want you? People get that concept so wrong because that's like saying, oh, I don't want to get commissions. What I have to do is I, I don't want to get commissions because if I get paid to do what I do, uh, it's not fun anymore. And then I am just drawing what other people tell me to draw and I cannot exercise my own creativity. Uh no, you can. You can totally exercise your own creativity. You can do it either in your free time or in the picture that you're doing yourself because the commissioner is always going to tell you to do certain things. Like, I give you details for all of this. But for everything that they don't give you details, you can exercise that creativity. You can put it in effect. Working for a company doesn't involve, oh, Big Brother has arrived, so that means no fun allowed. No, it usually means, oh, Big Brother has arrived, he's going to tell me to do ABC, I am going to do ABC, and if I can, I'm also going to do D. That's what happens when you work with people, like, when you're a creator and you work with people like Hasbro, for example. Uh, Katie Cook and Andy Price, they were talking about this in um, in a San Diego Comic Con panel where they are like working with Hasbro is actually really interesting because they put things in the comics uh, on the scripts and then they expect Hasbro to say no and then Hasbro goes and says yes <laughs> uh, or they don't say anything and they're like okay with those things and and I'm like yeah that is part of the creative process a, a company a, a suit in a company they can also be creative imagination is not something that you that dies with age it just gets uh, it gets rusty then you can always take it out and exercise it again. Uh, it's not something that dies away. So, mm-hmm. yeah, you can totally be creative working for a company. And I will totally be happy working for a company. Mostly because, you know, sometimes, yeah, imagination and creativity is great. But like your muscles, it can get tired. Mm-hmm. So sometimes it's better to get, yes, please just tell me what you want me to draw. Give me all the details and I will just recreate it. And that's it. And you put your imagination to rest for a couple of hours and then you like you're still drawing. Then you, you come back and you keep drawing again. Now it's something more creative and mm. works fine. I that's what I do, and it it's been working great for the past three years. Like no, even better for the past four years. It's uh, soon. It's going to be the anniversary of me being a brony for Ooh. four years. Four years without four years. an art block. Wow. Ever since I joined the, the Brony fandom, ever since I joined the Bronies, I have never had an art block. I don't know what that says about me or the fandom in itself, but seriously, that is a record. That is a personal record. I have never had that happen to me. Uh, 
Okay, I talk a lot about it, and I said, yes, I want to work with a company. But, Ron, why don't you want to work with a company? I'm comfy with where I am. I can make my own schedule. I can. It's much more free. With a company, there's a rules. There's, there's, there's rules, there's limitations to, like, s- certain things that I'm not very comfortable with. Like, getting up early in the morning and driving all across town really irritates me. But it's just the little things that I'm really, you know, bugged about. Plus, my current commissions, I, it's just enough to keep me floating. I don't want anything big. I just want to be here and just draw, just create, or destroy, or whatever that comes to my crazy mind. That's all I want. That's all I ever want. So, working for a company, sure, like James said, it would be, and it has its advantages, but I don't really need that. I mean, I'm pretty happy with what I got now. That, and we don't have anything that this my town, my city, my country would can offer me in that department. So, yeah, I'm cool. Any more questions, dear ladies and gentlemen? Can I ask a question? Sure, go ahead. Where do we see us in 10 years? Oh, dead in a ditch. Dude, oh, come on, know, be more right? optimistic. I don't think I want to know at this moment. Yeah. Okay, five years. Uh, I don't even know about that either. Well, honestly, for me, I'm the kind of person who lives in the now, who, well, who looks at things as the present. And for the future, it's the future's me problem. And I'm in the present, I'm doing things now. Probably there's not a good way to live by, but hey, it's how I look at things or how I experience things. I take things one step at a time. And, well, probably five years from now, I'll be, well, uh, doing some other work. Probably, well, I I don't know if I'll be doing this show for another five more years. (laughs) Because we've got no idea how the fandom is going to be like. But I would like to still keep doing this in the, for another five years. I hope that we don't have to stop doing what we do for fun. But then again, it reaches a point in your life where you have to be like, okay, I have to start doing this. Uh, what, what do I have to start? I have to start doing something for for real and seriously. Like, take this thing seriously. What am I going to do? And then that's when, that's when, when things like... Okay, do I make a career? Do I have to look for a job, or do I have to start doing other things? Like that's when it, that comes into place. Mm, true that. True that. So, guys, lovely people in my chat, that I love you so much. Do you uh, have any questions for us? Hey, Bunny has a question. I get the impression that a lot of artists struggle with fair prices for commissions. How do you decide what's fair? <laughs> Um, you have to be uh, very ballsy when it comes to that. Yeah. You have to be very brave when it comes to measure because you're basically measuring your art. You are like, okay, I think my art is worth this. Uh, and I'm like, okay, cool. Uh, let's see. And then you have to you have to make you you have to measure your artwork and you have to be uh, honest with yourself, saying, okay, I take one hour to make a sketch and. Uh, it looks like this, and then you're going to have to do something that I hate doing, but you have to do it because it's necessary. You have to compare your prices with the prices of other artists. Mm. And you have to say, okay, how much do they charge for this picture? They, they charge $15 for a sketch, and they have been doing this for longer than I have, so they have more experience. So they are charging also for the experience. I think that I should charge for five dollars for the sketch because I just started. Uh, yeah, that's it. I'm going to put my sketches at five dollars, and that's where you start. And then, as you improve and as you draw more, you increase the price of your drawings. And I recommend if you draw every day, I recommend increasing the prices one time a year, and I recommend increasing the prices in multiples of five or ten. Like if you charge for five uh, for a sketch for five dollars, uh, after sketching for an entire year, you you usually get better. So instead of charging five next year, you should start charging ten. And if you keep doing it, instead of charging ten next year, you should charge uh, fifteen or even twenty, and so on and so forth. Personally, for me in my line of work, I'm a freelance photographer, like I said before, and I'm technically lowballing my prices as. Uh, for my services the 
standard rate for photographers here are about a thousand and two, one thousand two hundred ringgit. Um, that would be about three hundred fifty something dollars American, probably. And I'm only charging about a hundred and fifty American dollars. So that's just for my services alone. And since I'm more of a f- event photographer, that includes weddings and whatnot. So that's considered cheap. But well, with our with my line of work, I do a lot of packages. So if you want an art album and whatnot, I'll put this price here, put this price there, and you know, <laughs> uh, yeah. But for me, I think I'm average. I need to fight with other people out there. And, well, since any Tom, Dick and Harry can have a camera right now and call themselves a photographer, I need to, well, basically fight with everyone. Hey, fighting! <laughs> well, when you think about it, anybody can take a, can, like, call themselves a photographer using, just by simply using a camera. But a uh, true photographer, I imagine, uh, would actually do more than just aim and click well technically it's based on scenario and whatnot like i said i'm more of an event photographer and what i do is aim and aim and shoot that's the that's the thing because it's the moment when you're having a wedding you need to be fast you can't overthink it you cannot over analyze things it's shoot or miss it because that bouquet is going to be thrown once in the end, in the end, does it pay well and does it allow you to keep, um, yeah. you know, get, in the then then that is, that is good and that is what counts. Uh, sure. Sometimes that's all you need. Uh, mm-hmm. Being able to get money out of your uh, out of your um, talent is impossible for some people. Uh, some people die not knowing that but they have caused an incredible impact in the world. You know. Mm. Yep. I understand. And I, I have a funny or an interesting antidote to this. James, you remember the sketch that I commissioned for you from Andy Price? Yeah. Okay, um, that sketch when he was in Singapore, he charged that sketch for 20 Singapore dollars, which is equivalent to 15 American dollars, which is considered yeah. cheap, not bad. It's, it's cheap, not bad. But it was kind of what, like James said, it was small. It was... Not as big as he expected. But here's the thing. Technically, he's lowballing his own prices so that fans of his could ask him for art. And I tell you this. When he was in Singapore, he did not have much time to rest, let alone um, see the show floor. He was at his table sketching and drawing. Sketching and drawing. Because people... Yeah, keep- because... Yeah, because for Andy Price and any other artist that goes to a convention, and I discovered this last year, going to a convention means business. Yeah. Business. But... Good business. Very good business because it is it is amazing that people in this fandom especially, they are so happy about supporting people like me or mm. artists in general. That is like it's it's a humbling experience when you have somebody coming at you and saying, "Hey, hey, uh, I don't know what you want for a, I don't know what to ask you for a commission, but I want to give you something here. Have fifteen dollars. Like, wow, why why do you want me to have this fifteen dollars? Because I love your art and you deserve the support and uh, I hope this can help. And I'm like, oh, dude, do you want a picture? No, 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 no. I just want you to be fine. Seriously, yeah, yeah. For, seriously, dude, t- take the money. Don't worry about it. Take the money. Like, Thank you. And then. They will come around every now and then, and they will be like, hey, doing fine, everything, yeah, yeah, everything's okay. And that is great. So, yeah, it is true that Andy Price was cutting down his prices for uh, for his fans. But imagine the amount of money that he gets paid for a fully colored, uh, f- uh, fully completed um, comic book. He, he, uh, true that. That's, oh, a funny thing about that one is um, that's under contract. So wh- whatever he did or whatever he does it's like um has not hasbro but idw paid him or commissioned him for a certain number of pages and yeah i'm paying you this much pages and we if you're done we'll renew a contract and you do much this you do this much pages so on because he told me 
But yeah, during the convention he was at, he did not do any full colored pages or whatever. He was just doing sketch and um, copic drawings. Uh, what do you call copic, James? Uh, what do you mean? Uh, you know the um, pen thingy, a brand called copic pens. Oh, you, you mean the markers? Yeah, markers and marker drawings. Yes, and those were about, I think, sixty. Um, dollars, something like that. It, it was a bit pricey, but you know what? I yeah, didn't because care. not only that, it's because those uh, the markers are super expensive. Actually, they cost a lot yeah. of money. Mm-hmm. Uh, and yeah, I will totally understand. A drawing with markers will cost cost sixty dollars, especially yeah, coming yeah. coming from Andy Price. I mean, it's Andy Price. Yeah, it's... total respect to that man. Oh, that, yeah. that that he is. A uh, true and true, uh, uh, absolutely uh, uh, exceptional professional in what he does, mm-hmm. and his comics are a big imp- inspiration. Not just the MLP comics, but the other ones he he works on. Oh yeah, I I bought a poster from him, and it was depicting Power Girl with Wonder Woman and Big Bertha. Yes, yeah, <laughs> and it yes, was so yes. good. <laughs> it was so good. Yeah, hey, he also uh, does. Oh, go ahead. Big Bertha. Yeah, you don't know. Uh, Big Bertha is um, a character from the DC universe. She, I think she's from the new gods or something like that. I, I don't remember. You don't know? <laughs> <laughs> Comic books are I strange. <laughs> I think we just killed Gonzo yeah, right there. Let's just, let's just forget it. Let's yeah. just. Okay, moving on swiftly. Any <laughs> new questions, ladies and gentlemen? Yeah. We're still open. Well, I, I think that's about it. Um, we answer a lot of questions, and well, um, we've been recording for about almost an hour. Oh, wow! We oh no, we reach an hour, so that's good. I'm surprised I haven't been asking about the fair price thing, but then again, I probably am not charging people oh. right now. <laughs> then again, I, yeah. I don't, oh. I don't <laughs> I, I I forgot to add one thing regarding the fair price. Mm-hmm. Um, don't worry when you raise your prices. Uh, don't worry when you decide to raise your, your prices because you, you you will be thinking, oh shoot, this what's the the result of this is that people are going to stop commissioning me or people are going to start uh, to stop asking me for art. But not usually. Uh, when you raise your prices. Those people that cannot afford the, co- the the artwork, they will sadly have to stop commissioning you. But there is usually some more people that could afford the artwork that uh, they're going to contact you. And I can tell you by experience, this always happens. I was worried at the beginning of the year when I was opening for commissions again. And I thought I was going to open for commissions for an entire week and I was going to have nobody asking me for one. And then I ran out of commission slots in one hour. <laughs> awesome. Surprise! That happens. Believe me. I even if you are not in, if you're insecure about it, I am surprised that artwork is one of those things that is always going to be needed. Uh, but it's always going to be needed. So, yeah, guys, don't worry about asking for um, uh, f- five, ten, fifteen dollars. That is something that you have to deal with yourself. You have to do a lot of inner inner search and uh, figure out how much is uh, uh, how worth is your artwork. And I see another question in the chat. Uh, asked by Dragenda, favorite song the MLP fandom has made. Uh, <laughs> my, uh, my answer is my answer is super easy. Do you guys want me to go ahead and then go ahead, do man. next? Uh, uh, give me time, give me time, because I need to double check things. My answer is September oh, by the, the, the Living Tombstone and uh, Mike the Microphone. Uh, that song is awesome. Like that, that 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 song is great. It has it. It is a song with a plot with a plot twist on its own. It it is it is a fantastic song. Really love it. Uh, the combination of like Tombstone's uh, calm uh, singing with Mike the Microphone's his uh, like uh, histrionic and psychotic singing is just perfect. And uh, I I totally love it. Mm. It is a, it is a fantastic song. Well. Um, for me, it will be um, Mendo Pony in general. Like Mendo Pony is an awesome musician. He, he, the, okay, honestly speaking, there's better than him. But for me, for me personally, I like him. He is awesome. His voice is great. His music is well. I I like it. And my favorite song of his is "Let's Go Get Lost" featuring Ellie Monty. 
it's technically a love song depicting Flash Century and Twilight. And I love it. I, I love Mendo so much where this the MBS show theme song is done by him. Ah, ha, 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 so, ha, ha, ha. yeah. I, I, Are you, um, how should I say this in a PG way possible? <laughs> what? Uh, go ahead. Sweetie Bob will edit it later. Are you, um, <laughs> are you sucking it up to Mando Pony? <laughs> hey. 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 Oh, my You're so yeah. sucking up. <laughs> You're so sucking up to Mando Pony. <laughs> hey, expect a new um, intro song or something like that this year. Who knows? I I, I don't mind. His, his work is really awesome. <laughs> what about you, Gons? I, I... I'm more of the actual music that's been produced through the industry. I'm not. Sh- I wasn't really sure about some of the band up because some of it, uh, some of it's kind of a little off. Some of them's good, but I. But the one that really got me, and it really got me moody, in a moody kind of way, was uh, the Main Hands song, "Living Tombstone," and uh, what was his name, Azimi Skin or something like that. Uh, I can't remember. I... It was the main hand song that was uh, made um, when, in light of Rarity Takes Manhattan, and um, it was it was really something that really got me. That's that's I, even though I'm not too much into some of the fandom works that some people that try to do because well, it's it's the 2010s and people, anybody with a computer can get. Uh, FL Studios and try to make their songs but it takes somebody like the Living Tombstone and whoever else he collaborated with during that song to actually make something that really it really gets to you and really just brings you into that kind of uh, uh, mindset yeah kind of like that hmm alright and Ro what about you oh give me a second to review my 300th <laughs> songs from the fandom uh, this is on 300 and above. And that's uh, only folder one. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh. Yeah, for me, it's really hard to decide. I'm really a big fan of the fandom, with the con- the mu- especially the music part, because there's so many awesome songs that just... My eyes, my ears, my everything goes all over the place, man. I cannot decide. Uh, as of late, the latest song that I've recently found from the fandom was... Let me take a look. What was it? Yeah, uh, Pinky's electro drum, electro electro drum. It was it was a crossover of Mario Kart's electro d- drums track and Pinkie Pie's song. Delta Brony. Yes, I love oh. Delta Brony and his crossovers. A combination of two cool things. That's something I really like. And Delta mm-hmm. Brony knows how to deliver it. Hmm. All right. Yeah, he seems to be better off at crossing over certain things than I can. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> But guys, I'm noticing you, and I am not your senpai. Come on. <laughs> there are people are calling me senpai in the stream saying, you know, we hope James senpai notices us. I'm like, ah. Uh, and, and it make a, I, I need make make a, make a so make us noise here to go with. So, any more questions, or are we closing uh, the shop? Yeah, by the way, uh, yeah. I think we should close shop, yeah, yeah, because we have answered a bunch of questions already, and it's been a, it's been a good run. Holy cow, we answered a bunch of questions. I, th- I didn't think we were going to answer this many. I know. Uh, it ran um, better than I expected. Anyway, yep, um, yep. thank you a lot, guys. Th- thank you for participating with us, because we had fun talking about this. Like, who, <laughs> who knew? TMI. <laughs> Indeed. Well, let's not do a TMI or else we're going to go um, not uh, only for a long time, but it's going to be very wrong. <laughs> Too much information. Oh. Let's do it after the recording. Oh, no. <laughs> yes. We can do the yeah, TMI after the, the meeting. The TMI Exclusive. Saturday. Uh, yeah. TMI Saturday. Oh, that man. one time at band camp? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Uh, we don't talk about that. <laughs> but, but anyhow, but anyhow, but anyhow um, I, I like to give you guys a shout out. Like, uh, Thank you, James, for coming on. Thank you. Bro, for being there to support me, and thank you, Gonzo, for coming on. It's awesome to have you on, and also thank you to the audience there. Thank you for asking us the questions, participating us with us, and dealing with my derps. Um, I can't thank you 
enough. And thank you to the audience at home who are listening to this right now. You're the best. Jinzi? Around, no one's gonna try to take you down. You're uh. the best. Around, <laughs> no one's gonna try to take you down. Uh. <laughs> no. And that was the musical moment of the NBA show. Back to you, Norman. <laughs> oh God! Because we don't have a sketch here, we have to do, make do with what we have, and that's me and my stupid eyes. <laughs> 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 What about Please you haven't James? heard me singing when I'm drunk. Oh no! Shout about, outs. Yeah. Um, shout outs. Well, let me just uh, give a shout out to every single person in my stream. That is Anticular Pony, Boom, Beth, Corner, Rakenda, Glenn, Her Doctor, Luna Bagel, Gonzo, of course, Roll Issues, Raomi, Pedro, Talibani, and you, Norman. Oh, thank you. Ro, you? Hi, mom. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. Never, uh, never change. Never <laughs> change. Why would you change? What is what is so good about change? I mean, come uh, on. I hate changes. Everything must be the same. Change. <laughs> there is something wrong with the house. I don't like change. Uh, what about you, Gonzo? It has to be like this forever. <laughs> uh, I, I, I thank you guys for letting me come on here. Um, since, this, since for some weird reason, I'm always asleep. We whenever you guys were recording mm-hmm. or whatever. Uh, thank you for putting up with my silly shenanigans. Uh, thank you for the people on the stream. Uh, thank you. That's th- not a word. For letting me have. <laughs> not- <laughs> Wait, so <laughs> that's, a- <laughs> that's not a word. For letting me have 91,000 subscribers as of today, as of this recording. <laughs> <laughs> Oh god! Moving on swiftly. <laughs> Seriously, thanks for the fans who continue to support me, even though I'm I'm currently in a very either physical or mental mess right now. It's really helpful for you guys. Yeah. No, no, no worries, going to... It's cool, man. It's, it's okay. Cool. Now, now go back to the cage. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> so anywho, uh, anywho, if you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can. Um, contact us at mvshowgmail.com email us we'll read it and probably we'll read it on the air live like what we did right now and also if you would like to email us well if you'd like to email me personally links are in the show notes you can also reach us on twitter the show's twitter account is at mvshow tweet sweetie bot will tweet and get mad at stuff especially me for derping really hard yay and also, if you want to tweet me, I am at Norman Sanzo. I tweet about toys, food, and whatever tickles my fancy. And currently, I'm on crack. <laughs> Magic crack. No. <laughs> James, where can they find you, man? Uh, they can find me under your bed, sneaking <laughs> behind you. Uh, you can you can check my movies like Tumblr on askmovieslate.tumblr.com and check my DeviantArt on jamescork.deviantart.com. And if you want to follow me on Twitter and see how much I swear... Uh, <laughs> Go follow me on James Lower Dash Cork. <laughs> Seriously, I have no idea. I didn't notice up until now how much I swear on Twitter. is like, oh, wow, that's a toilet. I have Twitter. Like, I give it the same use as a bathroom. Holy oh, God. Well, we got to well, have the one place the, where you got, we can one, speak James. out. You're not the only one. <laughs> I imagine you're not the only one whose who's Twitter is probably much more dirtier <laughs> than a toilet. <laughs> Uh, what about you, Ro? Where can I find you? Well, you can find me. Let me bring up the list of the places I'm hanging out oh, now. God. Let's see. You can find me at twitter.com slash religious underscore art on Facebook at... Let me just get the link. <laughs> oh, you, I already you, forgot. You, you are worse. Like, worse? No, I just need... Some people... It's easier for some people to hire me on different places. Uh, okay, so you can find me at, relish, at facebook.com slash relicious on DeviantArt, relicious.deviantart.com, and can't forget about my Tumblr gallery, reliciousgallery.tumblr.com. Uh, so Ooh, I'm done. Yay. What, what Should I get my Profinity on Ink Bunny account? Uh, no, probably later on, no. <laughs> okay, move on. What about you, Gonzo? Um, some of my uh, usual places. Um, you can find me on uh, my YouTube channel, Mindless Gonzo, on uh, Tumblr, Mindless Gonzo Jam, um, on Facebook, uh, Mindless Gonzo's Productions. Um, if you find me in a game, and you find me on Team Fortress Two or any other online game that I have uh, that I happen to have and be on, you can just through Steam. You can probably find me there, but I'm, I can't really reveal it because I already got like a bunch of people on my uh, Steam account. So. 
Oh, so popular on Steam, eh? <laughs> uh, it's it's not really thrilling, especially when people just come up come up and add me and like, oh my god, I see, I I I, I love Mauricio, I love Little Miss Rarity, I love the 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 the. And uh, what uh, the brawl? <laughs> what? Uh. I just saw the notification. Delicious <laughs> wants to add you on Steam. <laughs> Well, since we both play TF2 a lot. Oh, God. You can also... Uh, oh, also, um, because sometimes YouTube can be a bit of a, a, a hassle, I have also uh, uploaded on um, other, some other sites as well, and my main uh, alternate for YouTube is Zipcast. It'll be... Uh, it's it's kind of like YouTube, but it's like back in the days of YouTube before the corporate... Um, Shebang start yeah. happening. Um, you can find me at zipcast.com slash user slash mindless gonzo. Okay. I'll, right now, the channel is just random clips, random using stuff I can't upload on YouTube. Uh, I even tossed in a bunch of uh, shows, uh, clips from animes I like, shows I like, like Top Gear and The Daily Show and that for right now. Good All show. Right. Good show. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And also. Please subscribe and read us on iTunes, YouTube, and Sister Radio, and also like our Facebook page. Yes, we have the Facebook page. You I can also... hate whenever you venture on Facebook. God damn it! <laughs> do we really need Facebook, Norman? Well, some people do enjoy the Facebooks, and most we need of... to talk about this whole Facebook thing because I don't think this is good for our relationship. Oh no! <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It, mm. Now on the MBA show, the status—it's complicated. <laughs> <laughs> you still know I, that, eh? <laughs> I watched the social network like 50 times. I know very well how Facebook works, but I don't give a crap about it. It's complicated. Yeah, it's very complicated. <laughs> uh, you can also catch us on PonyvilleLife.com. Links will be provided in the show notes. So, I have been Norman Sanzo. I have been James Cork. I am Relicious. And I'm out of my mind right now. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> for a reason. <laughs> I have lost my mind, but I am Ian Scott, so anyway. <laughs> anyway, and we will see you on the next podcast. Bye bye. Bye bye, guys. <laughs> bye. Bye, Michael Player. <laughs> Shut up, Wade. <laughs> We got it wrong. Talibani is a boy. It's a guy. Sorry. <laughs> oh, sorry. Son oh. of a barrel chest at Freedom Fighter. <laughs> Son but, of a. Uh, <laughs> ah! Well, you know how it is on the internet that everybody says everybody is a guy until proved otherwise. I realize that it is easier and less troublesome to assume that everybody is a girl. Because <laughs> when you confuse a guy for a girl, they don't get so pissed off as you confuse.